The iPhone 15 Pro was one of the best-selling phones of this year, and so in today's video, I'm gonna be testing out these 12 for the next 12 hours to see if it's worth switching from the iPhone and losing iMessage, AirPods, and the overall Apple ecosystem. And the first phone that we're gonna start with is the S23 Ultra, which is Samsung's flagship phone. It has all of their features, the S Pen, multiple cameras, the bright display. It's one of my favorite phones that I reviewed this year. And I think it's the phone for someone that is like an enthusiast and wants all of the technical hardware to be great. Because in my opinion, it has the best zoom range on any Android phone. And it has like the best productivity on any Android phone in terms of split screen and being able to take notes. And the battery life was also really great this year. I loved this phone. For people that wanted something a little bit cheaper, the regular S23 and S23 Plus have a lot of the same features as the S23 Ultra, but for a lower price point of around $899, you do lose out on the incredible zoom quality, but you still get the amazing display and great build quality. Also, this video is sponsored by The Hustle. More on them later. So this is the Flip 5. It is Samsung's vertical foldable phone, and in my opinion, definitely the best vertical foldable for the US market. It's upgraded over it last year in terms of having a bigger cover display now, but the advantage of a foldable like this over like a normal candy bar style phone is that it's very pocketable. So these pants kind of have, I think are like fake pockets, they don't go that deep, but it still fits in perfectly. And for commuting, like getting on the subway in a second here, it's really nice to have something that is that compact. So for an environment like this, this is where the Flip 5 really comes alive. Um, portable, but then also works. But the same issue that I mentioned in the day in life review with this phone is still here. The aspect ratio of the display is 22 by nine. And so it's a little bit narrower than like the normal 18 by nine on phones, which means that constantly the screen really does get cropped in. So when you're watching a lot of videos, which I would often do on a commute, you either have to have a smaller display or miss crucial information on the content, which is why I still prefer like the more traditional form factor. Also, this is a front facing video test and it's currently 12.40 PM. So making moves here already through four phones. Okay, off the subway and to Times Square, which I feel like for tourists is like the spot in New York that we often think of when we see movies. Most New Yorkers don't love coming here. I kind of love it because you get to see people experiencing New York for the first time. And I feel like it's the perfect time to talk about the other type of foldable that isn't vertical, that costs $2,000, but is very interesting. And there are three main ones. The next class of phones are foldable phones. These three are foldables that are a normal smartphone that turns into like a tablet form factor over the vertical foldable. And Samsung has one too, this is a Fold 5. My favorite foldable right now for the US is the OnePlus Open. It feels like the most refined foldable. Google also came out with one, the Pixel Fold, but in comparison to these two, it feels like almost an earlier generation in terms of the design and build quality. The hinge feels a little bit less stable and the inner display has pretty large bezels. Camera quality on the Pixel Fold is better in my opinion versus the OnePlus though, so it depends on what you're weighing. But if you want a foldable of any kind, you do have to leave iPhone and come to Android. And when you do that, the main thing you leave behind is the Apple ecosystem. And if you have something like an Apple Watch, that's important. Speaking of the Apple Watch, I just read a fascinating article from The Hustle about it. So comparing the iPhone 15 Pro camera and the OnePlus Open while I talk about The Hustle. So I read a really interesting article that they posted last week about a lawsuit that Apple's in right now for the blood oxygen sensor on the Apple Watch. I feel like the Apple Watch is one of those things that really increases the utility of an iPhone. Like you suddenly get good fitness tracking and heart rate tracking and health tracking. But Apple's in a tight spot right now because they're in a lawsuit with someone that says that they've breached a patent clause and this was started a company like 20 years ago that helps with blood oxygen detection and they were coming out with a wearable watch and what this article was really interesting for was not just having the headline but knowing all the details that most other publications were not covering and it's a free news that they send out every single morning and i read it it takes like five minutes and then i just feel smarter and better research for the rest of the day it leads to interesting conversation so if you want to check it out and be educated on like tech and business news i'll leave a link in the description Hello. The Hustle, thank you so much for supporting me and our community and the mission here. I appreciate you. Also, Tesla Cybertruck just came out last week, so there's a place in New York that I think has a showroom of it. That's where we're going to go next, and when we go there, we'll talk a little bit more about what Google is doing on the phone market, because obviously, this is the Pixel Fold, and they're a really expensive $1,800 phone, but they also have two other really interesting contenders that I feel like a lot of people look at if they don't get an iPhone. seeing this Cybertruck in person. It is so much bigger than I thought it would be. 
I also feel like we need a full video on it, so let me know what you think about that. But I wanted to come here to talk about Pixel because we're kind of in the tech area of the city right by Google's office. And I made a video a few weeks back where I switched from the iPhone to the Pixel for a day and talked about all the features that you get when you switch to the 8 Pro, like the temperature sensor, the live transcription, which I actually think is one of the best features of this phone. You can record audio and then it will live transcribe what you're saying. It's great if you're like a student in a lecture or if you go to meetings a lot. Um, and then you have other AI features as well, a call screener, which can answer phone calls for you and see if it is someone like legitimate calling. And they also have one of the most budget phones in this video. The Nothing Phone 2 is also really interesting to me. And it feels like they got a lot of inspiration from iPhone in terms of software and design and the back of it. But this Pixel 7a is like $449. It has a great camera setup and really solid performance. So that to me is a very enticing buy if you want to get into Android 14 and the Google ecosystem without buying a Pixel 8 Pro. The Pixel 8 Pro this year was also guaranteed seven years of software updates. So similar to an iPhone, when you buy it, you're ensured that it will last for a while. I'm gonna check out the Cybertruck a little bit more right now. And then later in the day, we'll give the conclusion on these phones in comparison to the 15 and 15 Pro. Ending the day, how we started the day with the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro, which are incredible phones for their performance, their dependability, and then also their video quality. This is shot on the 15 Pro right now. I think they're really, really solid. Whether you get the 15 or the Pro model, you'll still get excellent performance. And the ecosystem is a big selling point of it. And I'm actually considering making a whole like day in life video with the ecosystem. So let me know if you want to check it out. I also genuinely love so many of the other phones in this video. And if you want to watch the day in life reviews on those, you can click right here or a video on iMessage right here so you can keep hanging out. And thank you so much. I appreciate you a lot. And I hope you have a magic day. And I'll catch you in one of these, hopefully. Bye.